plowed right through that fence there came in our field. Someone crashed into our field. Let's go look at it. What in the world? Can any day be bad when it starts off with little kittens? I mean, honestly, they're so cute. Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief. Trusted. Tested. True. Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday, September 30th. To give you guys a little bit of a timestamp, I know everybody's been wanting that. Last night, we worked really hard and finished soybean harvest. And I think today we're going to start on corn harvest. I'm really hoping for a Husker win against Michigan today, but we'll see. I just took my allergy medicine. It always makes me sneeze. I don't have a ton of information. I just know that he said to grab that and get to him as soon as I could. Got the oil draining down there. Grant, did you just have to like untwist something up here? So you would really like, just remember like you were talking about that case. Yeah. The case tractor. Yeah, it's just a little, yeah, let me show you. See this tube down here, right in the middle of the screen? There's a little turn dial. You just turn it and it drains the whole pan. It drains right out the bottom of the combine. It's super easy. And the oil filter is like right here, super easy to get to. So do you remember how I said I really didn't like this John Deere mechanism of how the ladder swings out? It's really difficult for me to handle, especially when I was on the downhill trying to push it uphill. And I really liked Case's system for the ladder coming out the back better. I will say John Deere just earned another point for how easy changing the oil is. And it keeps the wind off of you. It's kind of nice. It is, if I stick my head out here, my wind, my hair just goes straight back. It's so windy today. It means the corn is drying down though. So it's a good thing that we got done with beans and we can switch over to corn today. So we just put enough hours on the combine that we need to change the oil between beans and corn. That's a big filter. That is a huge filter. Do you still like changing oil, Laura? No. <laughs> Honestly, this is probably the easiest oil change on the whole farm. You're besides, probably right. This might even be easier than a four-wheeler besides the sheer volume of oil. I was gonna say, it's just it. so much. This might take a while. How many quarts of oil does this hold? Uh, a lot. It's probably more measured in gallons. Not the sea boy shirt. I'm so disappointed. That's just a shame. Dad and I were just talking about how we need to sit and watch when this thing is filling up because it's 20 years old. I mean, look at this. That is... Oh. I think that's certified junk. You look hot and sweaty. I've been riding dirt bikes. Oh my goodness. It's Sunday. I just it's went Sunday, out to... Sunday the field that I think we're going to start picking corn at first. So I picked three separate ears and I'm having Grant shuck them into a little bucket and we are going to test the moisture to see if it is ready to pick. Sometime you should try shelling an ear of corn by hand and then that'll appreciate, make you appreciate a combine. It does thousands of ears every minute. See what our hard work is looking like. Wow, look at that gold in there. What do we what do we have here, Grant? What is this? Um, it's a moisture tester. Is 
Think she'll go? Oh yeah. Alrighty, we are going to experiment with a little bit of voiceover because it was so incredibly windy this day. This is the bean head or the draper head. It's been unhooked. It rests on these little feet on this trailer right here. This is kind of a behind the scenes look of what the feeder house looks like. Those little spikes go out and come back in. I don't know, it's kind of cool. Everything's run by these hydraulics that you see and then this big PTO shaft. And then we got the combine out and moving again and went to hook up the corn head. got the corn head lifted up by the combine, but now it's time to attach the PTO shafts, the hydraulic lines to make some switches to some internal things, the actual threshing components of the combine. We did some washing on the outside, and now it is time to head out to harvest some corn. You think I can get it this time? Oh yeah, you got it. Oh, lined up perfectly. Does anybody have any guesses on how many gallons it's going to take this morning? Start off corn harvest with a full combine. One hundred and thirty-two gallons this morning. Not even close to all the way full. I mean, the tank is full, but the capacity is a lot more than that. It just wasn't all the way empty. Before I head out to the field, I am just checking and topping off all of the tires on the tractor and the second grain cart, and then also checking the oil and making sure I have everything in the cab that I'm going to need. We're not gonna bring this one out to the field yet, but with corn harvest, we'll definitely need the two grain carts. And this is our field. Gert and I have talked about this a lot. It's our field right off I-80. And I was like, who, what was driving out here? Do you see the tire tracks? Someone came off the interstate, plowed right through that fence there, came in our field. Someone crashed into our field. Let's go look at it. What in the world? So a super, like, I'm always worried about this field right here. Cause like if a tire come off a semi truck or a trailer, and it's in the crops and I don't see it and that comes in the combine, that'd be a huge deal. So I'm gonna go look around over there, make sure, like see that fence is laid over and like that got in the combine, that's no good. Or someone left a bumper out here or something. Bad deal, we better go investigate. Look at this, there's a corn stalk we stopped at. You can see they're bent over and broken. They plowed over all our corn. What in the world? Look at that good stuff. This must have been fairly recent. Look at this, it's laid over. 
Oh, the That's whole thing. Boy, they probably ramped off of this thing. Look at this jump. Here's the fence. Yeah, we don't want that getting caught in the corn head. It's barbed wire. I bet their bumper was wrecked. I honestly... I, I think they just drove right out. They totally just drove right out. Unbelievable. This is, this is a very steep berm here. This fence is to keep the deer off the interstate from coming out of the corn because it's actually a state maintained fence and ditch here. So that's that's not my fence, but man, I hope no deer venture up on the interstate. That'd not be good. She almost got stuck getting out. Oh my I goodness. I can't believe they just drove I off. bet, I bet if, I'm assuming it was a car, I bet the bottom of it drug on this berm. I, that had to be a pickup truck. To you survive think? that jump, into a cornfield and then let's put something did they and then wreck the fence out this direction because look this way the fence is pulled here like i think they drug the fence on their way out i bet you it was dark and they ramped into the cornfield woke up and then oh back onto the road i'm not seeing any debris i am seeing all of the corn they knocked down though what a shame. I'm gonna pick some of this up, throw it into the head. This has to be fairly recent because all this corn is dented. We were just talking with someone who didn't have a field on the side of the interstate, but had a field that is right by a highway and a car crashed or lost a tire. The tire rolled into his cornfield and he couldn't see it obviously. It's going along and then put the tire through the combine and it caused so much damage. A hundred percent full Grant. Oh, I can man. see the end. Are we gonna make it? I've, I've gone to where I can't see the camera anymore. Really? So I guess the only reason I say keep going is because of that mirror right there. I can't see the corn yet, so you must have room, right? Oh, it's full, full now. Oh boy. Take it nice and slow. Grain cart is on its way back. I can see it. He's running. Oh my goodness. You're not stopping. This shouldn't be as stressful as it is, but I'm just like, it's gonna, we're gonna start hearing trickling here pretty soon. Oh, no. Oh, come on. Oh. You can see the end of the row. I still can't see it in that mirror right up there. I should be able to see on the top. Look at that. It's going to cover the camera any second now. Oh. You watch it on these end rows here. Take it nice and slow. Bouncy, bouncy. Oh, it's spilling. Dang it. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay, well, I guess when it says it's full, it really is full. guys have no idea how excited I am to be harvesting corn. A quick question for you that you can answer in the comments and argue amongst yourselves. Is it picking corn? Is it harvesting corn? Is it shelling corn? What do you call it? But whatever you call it, I'm just excited. Soybeans are kind of slow and they definitely kick things off, but corn harvest really truly feels like harvest to me. So this makes my heart so happy. It is such a satisfying task to be doing. You can see all the hard work that went into planting and watering. And it's such a final thing. As soon as it's harvested, there's just nothing left. As you can see, this is a pretty fuel intensive task to be doing. Right now the machine is using a little over 20 gallons an hour. We're going three miles an hour. 
And this is my engine load right here, so I'm keeping it just under the yellow. We do not have nearly enough manpower or equipment power out here to keep up with how fast you can harvest corn. Even at three miles an hour, just with how much volume comes with corn, the two trucks and one grain cart cannot keep up with me. So our truck is being serviced right now. We have no gauges. And if I'm going to drive the semi truck, I need to see my RPMs. I need to see my speed just for it to be road safe. We need to have gauges. Grant just went back to our place to get the second grain cart. And while I'm waiting here, because clearly I'm full, I wanted to answer a question. I've seen a lot of people comment and ask, what is this? This is in an event of an emergency. Um, heaven forbid uh, the combine rolls over. I get in some kind of accident, whatever. The piece of equipment is equipped with this. It is a seatbelt cutter and also a window breaker. So if I would ever need to get out of this window or this window, I have this tool. I have to say, I've never used a window breaker before, but having one this close and easily accessed, if I get bored near everyone, so I'm like, what would happen if I just Obviously, I've never done that, but I think I might have to go to a junkyard or something and test that thing out. Another question I get asked a lot, especially during harvest time, is why do you use grain carts? Why would the combine not just skip the middleman and fill up the semi trucks itself? And that is because right now I am full on the north end of the field and it would be incredibly difficult for semi trucks to get down here in the first place and way harder when they're fully loaded. So the grain cart is the go between. I'm full over here, I can fill up the grain cart and then continue harvesting. The grain cart can be filling up the truck and then we can do on the go unloading because that's what we do most often. And we are back rolling. I'm going to give you guys a first hand visual on why Grant and I put so much time, effort and money into maintaining and keeping our pivots running. So right here, this is all irrigated. This is under the pivot. And in just a couple yards, you're going to see what the dry land corners of this field look like. Parts of the field that didn't get watered. You see it cuts off right there. 298, 301. Okay, so, yeah, baby. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that is awesome yields. And then this happens. All of that. This corn is yielding zero. There is no ears even put on these. Harvesting these end rows is pretty much just being a glorified lawn mower so that the stalks are all the same length. This is sad. I know when watching YouTube videos it can be very difficult to decipher when it was filmed because I'm not posting these on the day of. There's a few days difference in between when I film and when I actually post. But just to timestamp this, it is 5 p.m. We've been out at the field since a little before 10 a.m. and it is Monday, October 2nd of 2023. I guess I should clarify. Grant's taking over in the combine so I can go make us supper. It's currently 7 p.m.
ending the day filling the fuel trailer in preparation for tomorrow morning. On some past videos, a lot of people seem to have questions about why we put two different liquids into our combine when we fill it up. One of it is red off-road diesel, and the other one is diesel exhaust fluid. Um, it's kind of tricky for me to explain. I highly recommend just Googling what is diesel exhaust fluid and what does it do, and that should answer your question. But I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you for appreciating all the effort Grant and I go to to put out these daily harvest videos for you. Hopefully it's made the storyline a little bit easier to understand stand and we are still pushing really hard for 500,000 subscribers before the end of harvest. I'm getting a little nervous. I realized this morning that I typically gain roughly six to 10,000 subscribers a month and we'll probably fingers crossed be done with harvest at the end of this month and we're still 25,000 25, subscribers away. So we'll see if it happens, but I'm still pushing for it. I'm rooting for you guys. I really think you guys can help me do it. Only a small proportion of our regular viewers are subscribed. YouTube tells us that. So I think yeah, only like 16 or 20% of viewers are actually subscribed. You should probably go subscribe. <laughs> All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.